I'm Billy, and today I'm going to talk to you about cryotherapy and cold, immer immer cold immersion while sitting in that river there, which is currently at about 5 degrees centigrade. Let's get started. So, there are two camps when it comes to cold immersion. There's the Wim Hof style, of, the Wim Hof method, which is something that's become very popular over the last few years. And then there's the athletic performance side, which is where runners and high level athletes jump in a bin full of ice water after a big race or a big training session to try and help them recover quicker. I'm going to talk about both in this video, but I'm going to start with the athletic performance because, well, it's, it's a lot quicker to talk about and there's a lot less to discuss and then we'll move on to the Wim Hof stuff in a minute. All in that river, naked. Wish me luck. And it was at exactly this moment that everything went wrong. I walked over to the camera, stopped recording, stopped recording the audio, adjusted the camera so it was pointing in the right direction, started recording with the camera again, and then got into the water, completely oblivious to the fact that I wasn't recording any audio. So all I had was the camera microphone, which um, sounded like this. Yeah, not great, is it? So, after realising I made that mistake, and swearing profusely for a few minutes, I got my shit together, and realised that the only thing I could do to resolve this was to just get back in the water again, and do the video properly. So here it is. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. Oh, I am glowing. Okay, so hopefully future Billy let you in on what happened. Um, I'm gonna record this video again now in the river that's five degrees C. It's like an hour later and I've warmed up and I'm just gonna get back into the river again. <sighs> Wish me luck again, please. Oh, okay, oh, it's not even that bad this time. It's just, I just don't wanna be here. I'm not going to go in too deep this time because, if I'm honest, I don't want to get hypothermia. I'm just going to sit this deep so you can't see my genitals. See, I'm already shivering because I don't like it. So let's get this video done. Here we go. <laughs> and it's definitely recording this time. I can see it. Okay, so like I said, first we're going to talk about cold... Um, first we're going to talk about cold immersion after... Um, athletic event events so after a hard training session or after a race so in the case of um, like runners when they decide to get into a bucket of ice after a race or sorry a bin full of ice after a race there's a couple of benefits so at least that's what they say they say there's a couple of benefits and a couple of reasons why they do it so the first reason is that it reduces inflammation and the second reason is that it reduces the effect of muscle soreness and DOMS, which is delayed onset muscle soreness, which is that feeling you get about a day or a couple of days after you've had a big hard training session where you feel very, very tired and your muscles are very, very sore. So let's start with inflammation. When it comes to inflammation from injuries and from muscle tiredness, um, that's good inflammation. There's kind of good inflammation and bad inflammation. Good inflammation is inflammation that the body puts there, you know, to say it puts there on purpose. It's meant to be there. It is part of the recovery mechanic of the body, me mechanics. So, cold immersion. So inflammation is part of the natural healing process of injuries and it's part of the natural healing process for muscle recovery. 
to do cold immersion to get rid of that doesn't seem very logical and the research seems to back that up. Research seems to show that cold immersion makes you feel better so it, make, it reduces the effects of it reduces the feeling of muscle soreness and the feeling of DOMS but it doesn't actually do anything and well if it does do anything the only effects it seems to have had are negative effects and actually increase the amount of time it takes for you to recover so what I'd actually recommend is that instead of jumping in a bucket of ice after you do a hard training session wait a few hours and then go for a walk or the next day go for a walk or go for a swim or some kind of light exercise as an active recovery because that will get you a lot of the effects that you're looking for from cold immersion without the potential downsides that haven't been researched enough yet. Okay, next. Uh, I talked before how this felt like such a great idea at the time and then I did it and it feels horrible and now it feels doubly horrible and yeah. <sighs> Relax. Focus. Um, okay, so now let's move on to the Wim Hof method. The method. Method. The Wim Hof method is um, a thing developed by Wim Hof and it is. Uh, they have three kind of pillars, they call it, three main parts to the method. One part is uh, breathing, one part is commitment. And the third part is cold immersion. Now, I think that breathing, like breathing exercises, are very, very beneficial to you. There's lots of studies to show that they have hugely positive effects. And the same goes for commitment. Kind of in their, in their methodology, commitment means committing to doing it. It means like the meditative practice of coping with it and working through the fact that it's cold like I am for the second time today. Um, and I really think that those, those two things are incredibly beneficial if you can incorporate them into your life. Um, cold is where it starts to get a little bit iffy, a little bit of mixed messages. Um, so back onto infl inflammation. There, like I said earlier, there's good inflammation, like the kind you get after you've done a big workout or after you get injury, after you get an injury. And then there's bad inflammation. Bad inflammation would be something like arthritis or um, autoimmune disorders, some kind of allergy, um, what else have I got written here? Um, or some kind of uh, inflammation brought, upon, uh, brought on by chronic stress. Now, the cold, cold immersion and some of the stuff from the Wim Hof method has been shown to reduce these symptoms. So I'd say for these, the people with these kind of um, um, I keep saying um, if you get annoyed by that, please tell me to not do it in the comments. If you're someone affected by one of these conditions, then the Wim Hof Method or cold immersion as a thing might be something that you find useful. But I would be a little bit cautious because although they might help you deal with the symptoms, cold immersion, there isn't really any evidence that it cures any of these problems. It's only a temporary solution. So. I think it could be a great way to manage your symptoms if you have, the, have these problems. But for instance, if you have chronic stress in your life, I don't think that you should be using cold immersion as a way to deal with chronic stress. You need to work out why you're chronically stressed and solve that issue. And that kind of, the same thing continues on, on to the next part. Um, it's been t said to help with anxiety and depression, the um, cold immersion. Again, it's one of those things where Yes, there are studies to show that it does happen. Uh, when you get in cold water, it can release dopamine and endorphins, which make you feel a lot better. So yeah, yeah, de it definitely can have a positive effect. But once again, they aren't... But once again, that doesn't actually solve the issue because as soon as you stop doing cold immersions or when you've done them so much that your body no longer even bothers releasing endorphins or dopamine, you we'll just go back to how you were before unless in the time between starting and it starting cold immersion and it basically getting boring for your body you managed to work out why you were depressed or why you had anxiety and work through those issues so i think it can be a great way to break the cycle of depression but i don't think it's a great cure for depression within itself um 
So another thing that cold immersion claims to cure is, or not cure, to, to better, is the immune system. Now, it's quite interesting actually, the studies when you look into cold immersion connected to the immune system, because people that do cold immersion on a regular basis are less likely to take a day off of work sick. But, they report the same amount of days feeling ill as the people that don't do cold immersion. So, what that seems to show is that doing cold immersion doesn't actually make you less ill or strengthen your immune system, but it does seem to let you be able to deal with the symptoms of illness better. And I'm really starting to shiver now because this is the second time in. Nearly there, nearly at the end, I think. I think I'm nearly at the end. Can't be far away now. <laughs> no, I, I know I'm near the end because I've recorded this once already. Ah! <sighs> okay. Yes, so. Do, being able to do cold immersion, it, it seems to be again this determination, this commitment. Dealing with something that's hard and pushing past it seems to help, but it doesn't actually make you any less ill. But, interestingly, there are studies that show that people that do wild swimming are less likely to get ill. But they are less likely to get ill, irrelevant of whether they wild swim in cold waters or warm waters. And the studies that I read seem to put it down to one of a few factors, or maybe all of them. So one of the factors would be that it is often in a social situation that you go out wild swimming. Unlike me, here on my own in the middle of the Peak District, normally when people go wild swimming, they do it as a group. And we know that being social and being with other people has a big effect on your immune system and it makes you a much more healthy person in general. Um, the other, one of the other things they put it down to was just being in nature. Being in nature has um, been known for a long time to have a positive effect on your health. And finally, it could be the almost the act of microdosing on um, bacteria and viruses that are around you in nature all the time, in the soil and in the, in the air and anything you touch and in the water that you're in. So some combination of those three factors seems to reduce your likelihood of getting ill, which, you know, isn't really surprising, if I'm honest. But it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's cold water or warm water, it's just the act of going wild swimming. So... I mean, there's nothing wrong with wild swimming in cold water per se, but it's not the cold that makes the biggest difference. Okay. Uh, what's next? Not much left. Yeah, so... Getting used to the cold is something that, at least for me as someone in the UK, which is a country that in the winter gets pretty cold, is a very useful skill. It's, a, it's an asset to be able to deal with the cold for short, or long periods of time. But right now, I've, you know, done done 15 minutes already of being in the cold, got out and got back in again, and the air temperature's only seven degrees at the moment. Oh, it's probably less now, it's late. It's probably more like five again now. So, being able to deal with the cold is quite empowering, really, to be able to know that, even though I messed up the first recording royally, I knew that if I just ran around for a few minutes, I could get back in the water, record this video, and know that I can walk the half an hour back to my car, drive home in my car which doesn't have working heating, and just, just be completely fine. And it is very, very nice. But, once again, I don't... Okay, so... Yeah. Rewind a rewind second. Rewind time. So one of the elements of that is... There's two elements of that which most people talk about, and one of them is the mental side of things. Um, when it comes to the cold, a lot of it is mental. You... Your body is able to deal with the cold for a very long time before it actually succumbs to it. But if you don't have the mental fortitude to deal with it, and this is where the um, Wim Hof Method's commitment comes into it, if you don't have the mental fortitude to deal with it, you will very, very, very much struggle. But by... I'm just checking that the recording's still going. But by dealing with the cold on a regular basis, you do become a lot stronger to it. But this is where I differ again from the Wim Hof Method. For the last year, me and my partner haven't put the heating on in our house, even through the whole of last winter. And it had a huge effect on our lives because we realised you don't need to be in a heated environment all the time. 
even when our flat reached the same temperature as the outside, even through the winter when it was near zero or below zero, it wasn't very enjoyable, but we managed to deal with it and it actually wasn't too bad. And now we feel like, oh wow, we don't, we don't even need heating anymore. We just, if we get cold, we chuck a couple, of, couple more jumpers on and you get all that benefit without having to try and, even throughout the summer, trying to find some cold thing to jump in. Instead, we just, we just don't turn the heating on and save electricity in the process. It's amazing. <laughs> um, where was I? Uh, yeah, so the other, other element of getting used to the cold, again, which you can get from cold immersion or from the cold air, is brown fat. Brown fat is a type of fat, fat, oh, really shivering now, kind of fat that develops from being exposed to the cold. And it's the kind of fat that, unlike normal fat, which just sits there as an energy storage device for your muscles when you need energy, uh, brown fat actively turns energy, uh, stored energy, into heat when you need it. So it's great if you live in a cold climate to get more of that cold, uh, get more of that brown fat to, get, to um, be able to generate heat a lot easier. Oh God, sorry if I'm um, slurring my words a bit now. I'm really cold, but I've only got like that much of the page left and then I'll be done for the second time. <sighs> okay. So, yeah, what, what I would recommend is that I, I do recommend that you get in the cold water at some point in your life and get used to it and experience it and know that you can deal with it if you need to. But what I wouldn't recommend is doing it every single day. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to have the, the health benefits it claims to by doing it every day. In fact, most of them can be gained just by doing it once in a while. The other thing is go out and do it with your friends. Go and find a nice, natural place to do it. Go out with your friends and enjoy swimming with them, playing with them, doing whatever you want to do and having fun outside. Because what you have to remember is that humans of the species didn't spend that much time in freezing cold water because it's a terrible idea. You could die. If you decided just to go swimming in really cold rivers all the time in the middle of winter, you might just freeze to death if you can't get a fire going to keep, get yourself warm again. Um, so humans would not naturally choose to spend lots of time in cold water. They might have to cross a river. They might have to be outside in the cold for a period of time, but they wouldn't spend a lot of time in cold water. They'd really avoid it if they, if they didn't have to. So it doesn't make sense to me that you'd spend, you know, loads of time every single day in cold water. But like I said, you can get a lot of the benefits by instead being just outside or being in the cold air and getting used to the cold. <laughs> I think, I think that that might be it. Yes, yes, for the second time, this is it. The video's done. Please, uh, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go home now, I'm really cold. Thanks for watching. Oh God, okay. Don't fall in the water now. Oh, okay.